Hi booktube, Nikki here with a new video and a haul of mammoth proportions. So here's the deal. I have today a collective book haul of all the books that I bought from November to mid-January, um, which is when my book buying ban has begun. And after you see all of these books, you'll realize why I'm going on a book buying ban. But the thing is, last year I wasn't like buying as many books as I usually do and I wasn't um, reading as much, especially in the first half of the year. So basically I got to the end of the year and I was like, hey, there are all these books that I kind of feel like I missed out on. But today I have lots of books to show you. I haven't done an official count yet, but I believe it's more than 40. So I'll put the number somewhere in the title or the description or the moon. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to the books. I'm going to start at the top with the adult books and I'm going to start with one that I've seen around booktube quite a lot but even before booktube someone recommended it to me as their favorite book and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. So this book was recommended to me ages ago before I knew anything about booktube and then I saw Patrick Rothfuss on the Project for Awesome livestream and I was like he's a cool guy where have I heard that name oh he has a book and then I heard about it on booktube so basically it's a high fantasy about a character who I think his name is Kvoth Kvoth K Dizzle this is the first book in the King Killer King oh my gosh what the King Killer Chronicles is what this book is the first in I said it yes I think it has something to do with a boarding school or a school or a I've so I've heard some varying things and the thing is right I I'm very I find myself very hit and miss with high fantasy like I read Game of Thrones and I was like that's a good book objectively but I'm not gonna read any more of those because they're really long and the satisfaction for me is not the it's not really worth it um and the same with the Lord of the Rings I was like again yay for you and your elf poetry but I not into it as much um so hopefully hopefully I'll enjoy this I want to give it a try um and everyone seems to love it even people who don't read a lot of fantasy so I'm hoping it's good the next book is the only book I have that doesn't have a jacket. Um, it's a second hand by, I'm pretty sure this is young adult. Like to me, this is young adult, but apparently not. Anyway, whatever. This is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Here's the thing. I've read all the Twilight books except for that novella and the one that was leaked. I have studied Twilight at a university level. I can honestly say that I don't think that they're good. But I've heard a lot of people who don't like the Twilight series actually say that this is a really good example and they don't understand how she wrote Twilight and this. So I've kind of made sort of a New Year's resolution. I realized that I'd written off a lot of books before I'd even tried them or a lot of genres like fairies and um, supernatural stuff and I was like hey let's not do that because that's mean because you haven't actually tried it. Like I almost wrote off Scott Duggery Pleasant because it looked like a like a middle grade boys book that I was like eh, it looks kind of cheesy and funny but not good and now it's my favorite series so I'm all for new things and trying new stuff and new books and so I'm gonna try the host it sounds to me a lot like Animorphs I'm not gonna lie like hello yurks alien invasion the great of China by Matthew Riley. So um, Matthew Riley's Australian. Um, I have one of his books because I was like, yo, he's like one of our most popular writers. I need to get into some of his stuff. But um, I realized that I picked up a book that had, I think it was in the Jack West Jr. Like, series. And I don't think they're strictly a series, but I hate reading things out of order and it wasn't the first one. So I haven't read it. Someone was telling me about this and it just sounded really cool. And I was like, well, I'll start with that one. And then I found this um, autographed edition and I got really excited. So basically it's about a zoo in China that invents dragons. It has like a map on the inside of the zoo. I love maps, okay? Maps are awesome. And it's signed. It looks really good naked. The next book I've actually already read and talked about in my top books of 2014 video. And that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. This is a Turtleback Library Bound book. I wanted this cover on the hardcover, the big hardcover, right? And then I couldn't find it anywhere because they changed the cover to some girl with a dagger and a sleeve and a dress. And I was like, that's not. Uh, and then I was like, oh look, it's in hardcover and it's that cover. And then it came and it was this. And I was like, I should read. I should really read what I'm buying before I buy. This isn't even straight. Like it's, oh, it's appalling. Anyway, anyway, like I don't usually care about covers this much, 
But I really love these covers. They're awesome. They're like right up there with the Skullduggery Pleasant covers. They're really cool. Um, and so I was scouring eBay and I was scouring Book Depository and I was looking everywhere for this this cover in the big hardcover proper one and then I couldn't find it and then I walked into my b local bookstore one day and I'd seen that they had had all the books in hardcover um, but they had the new cover for the first book but then out of nowhere what what yay it's alive so I bought it, it cost me stupid amounts of money because hardcovers cost a billion dollars in Australia. Oh my god. This has, this is an $18 price tag in the US. I paid at least $10 more than that. This is ridiculous. What sucks is I'd already gotten the next two books in paperback because I knew I could get matching books. <sighs> I'm holding it upside down, I don't even care. I'm past caring, I don't even care anymore. I also picked up Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire, which I haven't read yet. Long story short, these are about an 18 year old girl who was the most well known assassin, but nobody knew that she was only 18. They thought that she was older, so then she got sent to a death camp when she got caught, and then she had to come out of the death camp and work for the prince in this competition to become the king's champion. That's probably a terrible summary, but it's awesome. The next book was a random buy that was not planned, and that is Replica by Jack Heath. Jack Heath, I had one of his other books on my shelves that I hadn't read yet. I'm so glad that I bought this before I read that because that book was terrible. It's called The Lab. I'm really glad that I read, bought this one because I bought it and I was like, well, I may as well read it because I bought it and I don't want to waste money. And then I really like this one. So this is about a girl named Chloe who um, wakes up one day and she sees herself and she's half her memories missing and stuff. And she's all like, why is there another person? And that's what I'm going to tell you because I think you should go in without knowing anything because some questions are answered really early on. Um, and it sort of draws you in, so I don't want to like be the thing that ruins it for you. I really think this cover is cool. Also it's signed in ballpoint pen, which I haven't seen before in any of my books. The next book I was tossing up whether or not to get, but I decided, why not? <laughs> because that's my mantra when it comes to book buying, not anything else. Everything else I, 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 I think about and I write lists and I have anxious heart to hearts with myself about whether I should do this thing, but books, just do it, man. So I bought this, which is The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. I haven't read any of Holly Black or Cassandra Clare. So I was like, well, two birds, one stone. Now I can say that I've read them when I do read this. I haven't read it yet. So this is the first book in the Magis Magisterium series? I don't know. I know that there's a sequel coming out at some point, I think, right? If I'm wrong, that's awkward. Awkward times of being wrong. I don't care. So what, from what I understand, the Magisterium is a school place and you have to pass the Iron Trial to get into the Magisterium. And Callum's been told that if he passes the Iron Trial, bad things will happen. So of course, he passes the Iron Trial because this book is longer than two pages. I wasn't gonna buy this next book because I heard such varying views of it. People loved it or people hated it. Um, and I was like, yo, I'm not gonna buy that because that's a bit risky. But then I found it super cheap one day. And that book is The Winner's Cursed by Marie Rutkowski. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Sorry if it's wrong, but this is book two. We're always pronouncing things wrong. But I think it's about a general's daughter who's quite well off and then she's going through the markets or something one day and then she accidentally buys a slave. Whoops. Bought a slave. I mean, what was your biggest whoops moment lately? Mine was realizing that I'd fallen to sleep with a texter pen in my bed or a felt pen, as you may call it. Um, and then I woke up and I had green everywhere. And I thought I'd been like abducted by aliens or something. And then I realized I just fell asleep on a texter pen and I'm in my 20s and that's pretty embarrassing. The next two books that I bought were very much very much a part of the whole let's not write off things before we try them. And the first one is Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. All I know about this is that this dude has wings. He doesn't like to wear a shirt. I think his name is Patch. And, quoting the back of the book, Patch's eyes were black orbs. I hate it when people describe eyes as orbs when it's not supposed to sound creepy. Orb eyes. Creepy, creepy. Is he supposed to be creepy? Maybe it is, but I hate, I hate it when eyes are described as orbs. I also picked up the sequel, which is hecka shiny. And crescendo. <laughs> of course, they don't match because that one's shiny. That's just the way, and, and they're different sizes. Most of my series don't match. It's what's inside that counts, guys. Did we learn nothing from Disney? Inside. Also, need princess hair and a thin waistline. Disney. The next book is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. And of three things about this book, I am sure. One, it follows Cassie. Two, there are aliens. You can't tell if a person is a person or an alien, I think. Not too sure about that one. 
And thirdly, if you drop this book on your foot, you will cry in the fetal position for 15 minutes because it really, really hurts. I dented it. Basically, this everyone's been saying good things about this. Not so much the sequel, but good things about this one. And I haven't got enough aliens on my shelf. I was actually organizing my shelf the other day, which is pretty weirdly categorized by like sub-genres and genres and anyway and I noticed that I didn't have very many alien books and I needed more alien books in the alien section of my bookshelf so ta-da! Half Bad by Sally Green. I'm not really sure about this one anymore. When I bought it I thought that it was about werewolves. I don't know. I don't know where I got that idea from. I don't know. I can't remember a source saying, yep, yeah, this is about werewolves. It's not about werewolves. It's about witches. And there are good witches and bad witches and this guy's half bad. It took me a long time to realize that this was a face. This is a face. <gasps> also, every time I pick up this book, I get frustrated because the back is one of those like, oh, it's the front cover. Lol, jokes. No, it's not. And it confuses me immensely. Let's hope it's not half bad. I'm actually really excited for this book and I want to read it pretty soon and that is Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. A, I haven't read anything by Brandon Sanderson but I've heard amazing things. B, superheroes that are actually supervillains. I think that's another place that's lacking in my shelf. There was like a pulse or something and it made some people have superpowers but they weren't like, oh yeah, I'm gonna don some tights and wear my underwear on the outside and save the world. No, they were villains. And those people are called epics. And then there are these people called reckoners who are trying to take down the epics. I'm really glad that we get the UK covers of things in Australia a lot of the time, except for Divergent, because I don't like the UK covers of Divergent. But these covers are awesome. I love them. I'm very excited to read the next one after I read this one, of course. This next one wasn't a planned by either, but it is Rock War by Robert Matchamore. Machimore? 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 I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, but he's the author of the Cherub series, of which I've read the first two books, and I think I have a couple more to read um, on my shelf. I really, really love that series. I think it's cool. Um, and this one is basically about three kids who start a rock band in a battle of the bands. I'd seen this book around, right? And I was like, oh, it looks like a middle grade book. Like, it just does, right? And then, and then I saw in the back, it's got the same not suitable for younger readers warning that the um, Cherub series has. Also, I love this. <laughs> the end paper's awesome. And, ta-da! How cool is that? This book cost me $5. Okay, getting a $5 brand new hardcover without killing somebody or sacrificing someone to some entity uh, is practically impossible in Australia. I don't know how I did it. I still congratulate myself on this purchase daily. I go, you know what? I may have slept in and missed breakfast, but I bought that hardcover that time for five dollars, so my life must be okay. This next one I wasn't planning to buy either, but it was in an online sale. It was like four dollars and I was like, heck yeah! I'd heard interesting things about it. And that is Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. I don't know much about this except that it's the first book in the Fair Assassins series. I think they're companion novels. Basically they're young women trained as assassins and that's all I know. I haven't even read the back of this book. This was probably the most recently received book which is why I don't know anything about it because I haven't really had a chance to look it over. I don't know which order these next two books go in because I'm ignorant but they are the next two books in the Midnighters trilogy. I have the first one which is called The Secret Hour on my shelf um, and then I picked up these ones so that's Blue Noon and Touching Darkness. I don't usually buy a whole series before I read them because I haven't read the first one. But these were ridiculously cheap in an online sale and I just couldn't say no. All I know is very little. Something about the lights going out and something happens at midnight and I really do want to go into these books blind because I don't know very much and they don't reveal very much and I find if they don't reveal very much it's because they don't want you to know very much. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. This next book I read and bought at Christmas time and that is Let It Snow by Maureen Johnson, John Green and Lauren Miracle. Um, I just wanted to read a Christmassy book <laughs> and I didn't have one. So actually I did have one, which I haven't read, which makes me mad because now I have to wait till next Christmas to read that book. Anyway, whatever, who cares? This one has one story by each of these authors and they intertwine. They're set during a snowstorm in a small town and they follow three different couples and I really enjoyed it. It was interesting reading about a snowstorm in the freaking heat of summer. This next book was an impulse purchase that I kind of almost regret because it is the riskiest buy probably out of any of these books. I don't know if I'll actually like it. And that is All These Things I've Done by Gabrielle Zevin. I don't know very much about this book except that it's set in the future and there's like futuristic gangland war which was the draw in for me because it just was something I hadn't read before 
Also, the girl in the front looks like Rihanna. Am I the only one to see this? Is that not Rihanna? It looks like Rihanna. So there's a girl named Anya who gets arrested for something. And the district attorney says, hey, you can either stay away from my son or I'll destroy your family. And that's really a hard decision for her. I... I'm not sure if I like this. Someone reassure me about this purchase, please, in the comments. Please tell me I did a good thing by buying this. It was really cheap, so I'm not super cut up if it's not something I like. But again, again with the trying of new things. This next book I looked for when it first came out, but it wasn't anywhere in Australia that I could find it. And then I forgot about it. And then I was like, I regretted all my life decisions when I saw it and I was like, I haven't bought that book yet. And that is Veronica Mars, The Thousand Dollar Tan Line by Rob Thomas and Jennifer Graham. So I love Veronica Mars. I love the series so much. I've watched the seasons over and over and over again and I've got the movie. I kickstarted the movie. I had the movie the day it came out. So there were only three screenings in the whole of Australia in actual cinemas the day it came out. And then it was gone forever. I didn't screen in cinemas here except for those three screenings, three one-time screenings, and I got in. We had terrible seats, but I got us tickets to one of those screenings. We had to drive an hour to get there, but we saw it. This is the first of two. I think the second book's about to come out or may have already come out. They are set after the movie, and what I like about them is that they're it's Rob Thomas who created the show so it's not like one of those movie tie-ins or things that basically could be fan fiction because they have no um, influence on the canon or the characters. Um, we know that Rob Thomas is the dude who made the show so he can do whatever he wants. For this next one we need a little bit of backstory, just a little bit, just a smidge I promise. So basically last October I went to a signing by Derek Landy who wrote Skullduggery Pleasant which is my favourite series in the world and I was really excited and I was all pumped and there were all these like 10 year old kids on the floor because technically the first this book is like middle grade but then like I just read the last book and I was like I just, are they prepared for this are they prepared for this I was like sitting up with all the adults I was in between two mums anyway and then there's like question time and I asked a question it was a really good one I'm very proud of myself um and all these kids were putting their hands up and this one kid puts his hand up and he asks about a Doctor Who short story that Derek Lady had written and oh my goodness I had to catch my breath and sort of reel in my emotions at the time and make a really good poker face and not let the two mums that I was sitting in between and the rest of the world at large know that I had just been outsmarted by a 10 year old. That, that I didn't know about this short story that he'd written for Doctor Who. I had no idea. I had to act like this wasn't a surprise. Like I wasn't feeling the shame of not having read this thing by my favorite author, despite having read everything else that he'd published. I was like, oh my goodness, we can do this guys. We can get this together. We can reel this in. Nobody has to know of your failure. And then after I left the signing, I promptly forgot completely. And then one day, just before Christmas, I was walking into the ABC store. The ABC is like our non-commercial television network, similar to the BBC, so it plays Doctor Who and stuff. And then I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. It didn't look like that because it's upside down. It is called 12 Doctors, 12 Stories, and it's by 12 different people. Ball, and they all write a short story about one of the doctors and I was really surprised by the contributing names so like some made sense like Neil Gaiman has written for Doctor Who the actual show so that made sense and like Mallory Blackman I read Nords and Crosses by her and I loved it and Rochelle Mead I read the Vampire Academy's first book and finished it. Michael Scott clearly taken some time out from Dunder Mifflin. I'm joking I know that he's not that Michael Scott. I just it's funny, right? No, okay, it's not. Shh. Guess which Doctor Derek Landy's story is about. It's the tenth one. The tenth Doctor. My favourite Doctor. Oh my gosh. My favourite author, my favourite Doctor. Yay! The next book that I picked up is by one of the contributing authors to that series of short stories, and that is book one of the Warp series by Owen Coffer, The Reluctant Assassin. This is about a Victorian orphan who gets hurtled into the 21st century and then they're followed by like some sort of time assassin and then uh, Chevy the youngest FBI agent has to track him down or something. I was a little bit bummed when I read the back and I was like ah oh, yeah they're all boys because Owen Colfer has awesome female characters but then I realized Chevy is short for Chevron and Chevron is a girl. Also by Owen Colfer I picked up Half Moon Investigations which is about a kid named, I just looked at his name, I just looked at his name, Fletcher. His name's Fletcher. Who is like a little mini 
private investigator. I don't know how old he is, but he's just a kid. Um, and then he gets framed for something and he has to prove his innocence and it just sounds like a fun middle grade read. I actually already had this book, but I put it second hand and it looked like it had been chewed. And then I found this for like ridiculously cheap and I was, I don't usually rebuy books, but um, this was such a good price and I was like, ah, uh, that's really cool. I like this cover better. However, I have not read it yet. So I'm looking forward to that. Also in the realm of middle grade books, I am collecting a series of unfortunate events. I read the first couple when they were coming out when I was a kid and then I kind of didn't keep up with it and I just forgot. So I have the first one and I bought the second one, The Reptile Room. This is by Lemony Snicket, by the way. And then I've also got the fifth one here, The Austere Academy. Um, these are really cool. I bought these second hand, but the good thing about these is that they like they've got the deckled edges and they're supposed to look kind of old timey, so it doesn't really matter if they're a little bit beaten up because they're second hand. So I'm just really excited to have this series. I've already read the first one last year, so I'm hoping to continue and read the second one soon. Oh my gosh, we are reaching the end, guys. We are near the end. Wanna join Booktube? I found out about this awesome thing called the read along where you read books with other people and you can discuss them and stuff and yay and then I saw one that was starting um that was a series that I wanted to read and I was like okay fine I will buy that series and that series was Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series I was looking for these in hardcover because I was like I want to make them I want to get them really nice and good looking on my shelf but then I saw this box set and oh my freaking goodness it's so pretty I know that a lot of people get rid of the box but I really like the box this is the first one which I already had I had read the first one look at the covers they're so pretty and what's cool is like this is the first one that's the lightning thief and then this is the second one um which is the sea of monsters which i've read and they join together and they all join together oh my gosh i can't like do this i'm not very coordinated oh my gosh see they join together and they make this like awesome panorama and then it comes with this little thing so that's what they that's what they're gonna look like when they're all together oh my gosh if you're not aware of what the series is about it's about a kid named percy jackson or as i like to call him pj Nobody in the books calls him that. Nobody. Just me. Just me. Discovers that he's a half-blood, which means one of his parents is a, like, one of the mythological, um, Greek gods. And then he goes to half-blood camp, camp half-blood even. Um, and yeah, it's just adventures. Adventure Central. And it's really good. And Percy Jackson is really sassy. Percy Sass Jackson, as I like to call him. Again, no one calls him that. Just me. Anyway, so I already hauled one of the books in this series, and these are the other two. I'm not 100% sure of the order. I know the first book, though, is Withering Tides by Louise Renison. Um, she wrote the um, Confessions of Georgia Nicholson series, which I really, really love, um, and I'm currently collecting as well. And this is her series about a girl named Tallulah Casey who goes to, like, performing arts school. And I just love, like, theatery type books, because I went to a creative arts school. And, um, and of course, you've got the British humour. And then... A Midsummer Tights Dream as well. The other one is called The Taming of the Tights, um, which is on my shelf right now. I bought these from different places and they match, so bonus. Bonus. I was actually really sick at the start of the year and I was like in bed and I was like, oh, my brain hurts and my whole self hurts. So I watched a Disney movie because that's what you do when you're feeling crap. You watch a Disney movie and then you want to sing. Um, so I watched The Princess Diaries, I watched the first two and I love them so much and I was like, yo, these are books, right? And I've heard good things about them. So I went to, I went to go find like the first book in the series, but then I found out that the books were being re-released. Um, the Princess Diaries books by Meg Cabot are being re-released, uh, with different covers and different titles. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find the old titles for cheap. And I did. It just happened to be that these books were on clearance and an Australian online um, bookstore um, because the, they're the old ones. And I got all of them. They worked out to be like $5 a book. I got the entire series. Oh my gosh, yay! I really hope I like them because now I have the whole series. They're told in diary entries, so I think along the same lines as the George Nicholson series, except obviously way less British because they're American. It's going to be that kind of fun, fun sort of quick read. So we've got the Princess Diaries, take two. Also, I love it when the title is the number because then I'm like, thank you for helping me figure out which book is next. Thank you. Third time lucky, Mia goes forth, give me five, six sational, seventh heaven, after eight, to the nines, and the last one, 10 out of 10. So the last two are actually like, for older readers, which I'm assuming means they're YA as opposed to middle grade. Um, but I'm really excited to read these. I think that I, these will be perfect books for kind of readathons to like, just read real quick when you need a boost. If you're unaware of The Princess Diaries, it's about a girl who finds out that she's a princess 
and she keeps a diary. I'm prepared for it to be quite different to the movie um, because I've heard a couple of the differences already, um, like about her father and I think her grandmother is quite a different character. But anyway, I'm really excited. We're almost at the end of this haul. We've been in it for the long haul. Get it? Long haul? Okay, I'm sorry. But I've got a couple of graphic novels to show you that I got for Christmas from my friend. The first one is huge and it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer season 8. I think this is um, volume 2. So it's a huge, huge collection. It's so big. I've never owned a comic book this big. I've never owned a graphic novel of this sheer mass size. I love this. I haven't actually read season 8. Like, I've read the first, first um, issue, but I haven't um, really caught up with it. And um, no, I can. No, I can. Oh, my gosh. This one is got a number of creators, as comic books do, but it's mainly created by Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard. And finally, Tales of the Vampires by Joss Whedon, Jane Espenson, Brett Matthews, a bunch of other people, Drew Goddard. Um, but it is just, you know, more tales about vampires. It looks like it has a whole bunch of varying art styles, which is exciting. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited to read that. I'm hoping to integrate more graphic novels into my reading experience. So unless I've missed any books in this grand pile of craziness that is my room right now, um, I think that's all of them. <laughs> Thank you for hanging in for that entire thing. Let me know if you've read any of those books in the comments below or anything else you want to tell me. The name of your dog. Your favourite sandwich. Also like this video if you like it. You can check out my other channel, um, my main channel where I do other stuff, not book related, but also fun. And subscribe if you want to see more. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I don't know how to end these. Okay, bye.